Ni hao. Thank you. I'm done. Just kidding. Um, we're getting near the end of the morning, and our pit gave me such a fantastic introduction, but the idea is to talk a little about how all of these things work together in your day-to-day lives. This is a caterpillar. And you may be asking yourself, why is Abby showing me a picture of a caterpillar at an open source conference? Well, a caterpillar represents to me something we all spend a lot of time talking about, digital transformation. Because a caterpillar spins a cocoon, disappears for a few weeks, and emerges later transformed. It's magic, right? But now something completely different. This is a whitewater kayaker. She's navigating the rapids, always alert, always in motion. The waters around her are constantly shifting, changing. She must react to their forces in the moment, one moment at a time. Now let's talk about your organizations. How are you reacting to the changes that are happening in your markets? How are you reacting to the changes in your industry? Are you able to be responsive to customer needs? Are you able to innovate and iterate at the pace you want to? Because if you listen to all the conversation that happens around digital transformation, it really focuses on the fact that we're going to all disappear for a few months and emerge transformed. We're going to have all the skills we need to take advantage of all these new technologies. But we all know, those of us that live this day to day, it's not that simple. Real transformation is not about adopting the latest technology. It's about adapting to a world that's now ordered around technology. We must realize that the next new and shiny thing is actually a river rapid of new and shiny things. And it's not slowing down. The reality is we're all kayakers now, if you understand where this analogy was going. But we're all trying to figure out how to navigate all of these new emerging technologies that are bubbling up. And how do we shift and change to evolve to either adopt those new technologies or adapt to new ways of working? And so when I think about what this means for organizations individually, it's that we must have a plan for learning. That having choice for those technology solutions is critical. And most importantly, abstracting away that complexity. So we spent a lot of time this morning learning about a variety of open source technologies and how they're all building blocks that build the ultimate outcome, which is that solution for your business. And so abstraction is key. So whether you're a CIO, a COO, a developer, you're having to look at horizons further ahead than right now. You're having to look further ahead than the next new shiny technology. But more importantly, how do all of these technologies work for your business? Because the pace of change is accelerating. Everything is accelerating. In fact, I believe that this year, organizations are now having to really reconcile with the fact that all of these new technologies and what is the value they bring to my business. In fact, 69% of all IT decision makers around the world say that digital transformation is extremely or very important to their business. And so this isn't just one or two companies that are jumping on the latest hype. It's companies that are reconciling with the fact that this is a new way of working. But what do I mean when I talk about digital transformation? Because it's, let's be honest, it's a word that's used a lot. But when I think about the core tenets of digital transformation, 
I really come to three things. The ability to be more responsive to customers and changes in market demands. The ability to fail faster. And finally, the ability to innovate more and, and iterate on those ideas quickly. So when I think about digital transformation and the role technology plays in those, that's where I really come back to. One of the things we spend a lot of time thinking about at Cloud Foundry is what does the future look like? Are we evolving fast enough? Are we adapting fast enough? And what do our users really want out of a platform? We came to the conclusion that our users are looking at the ability to adapt to change faster, embrace multi-platform, really leverage a variety of technologies to build their business, and finally, why we're all here, they want to be part of open source. They want to leverage the open source technologies to build the future of their business. For us, this has represented a myriad of changes over the years. We're nearly a five-year-old open source foundation. And for us, we've had a long history of both not just open sourcing our technologies, but pulling in and adopting the new latest emerging cloud native technologies. And for us, I think about the work we do here at Cloud Foundry, very similar to the adoption and adaptation roles that you have to undergo in your organizations. From our research, we found that over 48% of organizations today are already running multi-platform. That means these organizations are running platform as a service, containers, serverless, and a variety of other technologies to solve the myriad of complex business needs that they have. Organizations today are also running multi-cloud. So half of organizations today are running across a variety of public and private clouds. And we also heard from uh, our research that 66% of people feel that open source unlocks opportunity. And I wanted to highlight that because that's been a big theme of all of the talks this morning, is how open source can not only help you innovate faster, but it unlocks the opportunity in your business to innovate a little further and go a little more. And for us at Cloud Foundry, that represents the same thing. How do we continuously evolve a platform as a service? How do we make it the best platform for developers? And that's looking at the open source world. What is happening in open source technology and cloud native open source technology that are really going to help drive us forward? In fact, one of our big announcements from this year was the Arini project. And for those of you that aren't familiar with it, the Arini project allows for a pluggable scheduler within Cloud Foundry. So today, now you can use Diego or Kubernetes to run and orchestrate your containers. This has been a project we've been working on for some time, but represents a, a big change in the way that the Cloud Foundry Foundation, the Cloud Foundry platform is evolving going forward. For us, we continue to think about all of the open source technologies as they come up. What is the role they play within our platform? And what's the value they bring to our users? And that's a similar conversation I suspect you're all having in your organizations today as well. For us, we rely 100% on our community to drive this through pull requests, commits. Our contributor base continues to power what the future of Cloud Foundry looks like. And with half the Fortune 500 already shaping the future of their companies, on Cloud Foundry, that is more important than ever. Companies like Sky, a UK-based telecom company that leverages Cloud Foundry to power their mobile services. And today run over 4,000 application containers on Cloud Foundry. Or another company, SAP, a large software company that uses Cloud Foundry both internally as well as with their customers. 
and has one of our larger deployments, internally supports over 20,000 developers, and runs 50,000 containers internally, and another 44,000 containers for their customers. So we look at these two use cases as a way to think about how am I pulling in these open source technologies to build the future of my company. So if I want to leave you here today with two thoughts. First, as you're thinking about these new emerging technologies and you're thinking about building the future of your company, how can you participate? How can you leverage open source to build the future of your company, but also how do you participate back? And second, contribute your ideas. Be active in the communities. Contribute back to these open source technologies that you're leveraging, because that's the best way to shape the future of that technology. So anyone that's learned to master the rush of the rapids will tell you it's kind of addicting. And I can't wait to get back in. That's what I'd like to see for everyone here, is to outmaneuver your competition and experience things you've never seen before, to build for the future, and have fun doing it. Shishin. <laughs> <laughs>